Hello and welcome to the Faded Wildflower Crochet. My name is Rachel and for today's video I'm going to be trying out four different crochet amigurumi patterns and I found these patterns in four different ways. One on Ravelry, one here on YouTube, one from a library book, and one on Instagram. So along the way of me making these plushies I'm also going to be talking about the process of finding a pattern on each of these different platforms and kind of the pros and cons of each one. I'm also coming to you today from the surface of the sun. It is so hot outside right now. So if you can hear air conditioner noise or fan noise or Lily panting, speaking of the devil, then I apologize for that. So the first way that I decided to find a pattern was on Ravelry. And I have to admit that I really don't use this option that often. I find Ravelry a little bit intimidating. I feel like there are so many options that it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. It's kind of similar to how I feel about Pinterest, which I did not choose Pinterest as an option just because I've been really frustrated with Pinterest lately. I feel like it used to be a really good way to find things. And now it's like 95% ads. It's kind of how I feel about TikTok as well, but that is not what this video is about today. <laughs> so on Ravelry, there are, like I said, so many options. So you can choose with your filters which craft you're doing. You can choose what yarn you want to use. And of course, you can also sort it by which patterns are free. So I think that this is actually a really good option. I'm not sure why I don't use it more often, but after today's video, I probably will be spoiler alert because today's pattern was really good. I ended up choosing this cute little astronaut pattern. For some reason, he just really caught my eye. I thought he was so adorable. And my husband's always talking about how he wishes he could go to space. So I thought that this could be a cute little gift for him. So let's cut to the footage of me making this astronaut. So here he is, my finished astronaut. I think he turned out so cute. And this pattern was so easy to follow. You guys know if you watch this channel that I typically change things in patterns. It's just who I am as a person. As a pattern designer myself, I'm like, well, I like that, but I think I'm gonna change that a little bit, do this other technique or what have you. But I did not do that this time. I surprised myself by not changing anything about this pattern. I did it exactly like the pictures, except for that I chose a heart for this one instead of the lines, but that heart option was on the other color variation that they had in the photos. But other than that, I did this exactly like the pattern called for. And I just think he is adorable. The pattern was so easy to follow. It was very simple in the best way. Like there wasn't a lot of frills. There wasn't a lot of like, decoration all over the pattern or anything. It was just very, very easy to understand. And I love that. The one thing that I was a little bit hesitant about whenever I decided on this pattern was the color changes. I'm not much of a color changing kind of girl. I don't have a lot of experience with that. And we'll talk about that with another pattern that we're gonna be doing in a little bit. But I usually just like sew color changes on. So if I were to have designed my own astronaut, I probably would have just crocheted another black piece and sewed that on top. I'm just not used to color changing. And I'm not sure that you can actually tell in any of the close-ups, but I was carrying over my yarn, but I felt like you could see the white underneath here. So I ended up cutting the yarn every time I changed the colors, which was kind of a lot, but 
I do think the end result turned out really, really cute. And it gave me a little bit more confidence in the color changing method, which again, we'll get to in a minute, another pattern that I had some troubles with the color changing. But I do think that this just turned out so adorable. I really wouldn't change anything about it, except for maybe the fact that these little side pieces do kind of stick out. Like, can you see that? I just sort of pushed them in like that and that's fine, but I probably would have like done a back loop only row to make that a little bit flatter right there, if you know what I mean. But other than that, I just think he's so cute. I think with just like a couple of changes, like adding a face right here and adding maybe like some buttons, it would look like a robot. And I think that would be really cute. So I may be following this exact pattern again and making like a cute little robot friend. I think that would also be adorable. I love patterns where if you just do a few tweaks, then you can customize it into something else. I think that's really cool. I also think that it would be really cute. I was thinking as I was making this to make an astronaut in this size and this kind of acrylic yarn or even like a smaller, like thinner weight yarn, make an astronaut and then use like bulky weight yarn to make a bunch of planets because then you would have this little astronaut and then these big planets and like a big sun. Wouldn't that be so cute as a gift for a kid? I feel like that might be something that I work on in the future for my nephew's birthday because I think that would be so adorable. So like I said, I did decide that I wanted to give this as a gift to my husband. And as I knew I was going to be trying out four different patterns and there's four members of my family, it was only natural that each of the next three gifts would be for the three other members of my family. So I did ask my younger daughter what she wanted me to make. And of course she said a cat because cats are her favorite animal. And I decided to search on YouTube next for the next pattern that I was going to make. Now I have to admit that video tutorials are just not really my preferred way to learn. I know so many people love video tutorials and they only do video tutorials. And that's great. I, I think YouTube is such a great resource for that. However, I was having some trouble as I was searching on YouTube, because like I said, I don't typically watch tutorials. So this was a different thing for me to be searching for. So as I was searching for the cat, and hopefully I'm able to bring up some uh, screenshots of it, but the algorithm just kept showing me things that I would normally watch, like more like crochet with me's or like yarn chatty type of videos, which are the typical videos for me to watch. I don't really watch tutorials, but I watch those type of videos and they are kind of adjacent. So YouTube kept showing me those type of videos instead of tutorials. So I did have to do quite a bit of searching in order to find this. I won't say quite a bit, but it's like if it's more than two scrolls, that's quite a bit, right? <laughs> but I did find this adorable cat pattern and I will have the name of the person. I'm sorry if you can hear Lily walking around. She's being kind of restless. Again, it's so hot outside that we can't really do a lot outside right now. Like she wants to go like run around outside and she wants me to sit out there with her. But I'm like, girl, it's the surface of the sun out here. I cannot be out here for more than five minutes. So I did find this adorable cat pattern and it was pretty new. I think that it was only posted seven days before I made it. I'm not sure when this video is going to come out in the order of things, but it's a pretty new pattern and I thought it looked so adorable. And so let's go ahead and cut to me making that cat. This 
this little kitty turned out so cute. Are you kidding me? This is adorable and my daughter loves it. I will say video tutorials, like I mentioned, are really just not my cup of tea. It's not my preferred way of learning, but if you like video tutorials, I think this was a great one. She really shows you step by step. So if you're a beginner, she really goes step by step of how to do the stitches, where to put the stitches. And she also has a really nice soothing voice. She put calm music in the background. So if you enjoy that kind of aspect of video tutorials where it feels like you are learning from someone in a very calm way, then I think you would love this. Now, the only part that was a little bit tricky to me personally was the way that she connected the belly and the legs. It was just not a way that I have done that before. And so I actually appreciated the video tutorial for that because like I said, she walks you through exactly what to do. And so it was very easy for me to understand, even though it was a new technique to me. I have to admit though, for the rest of the video, I pretty much did skim through, but she did have the pattern written up on the screen. And so it was very easy to skip through. If I kind of knew what she was doing, I would just do it really quick, skip forward to the next part. And that made it really, really simple to follow. So I did actually end up surprising myself by how much I enjoyed this. I also did not change anything on this pattern, you guys. I'm so surprising myself. If you know me, you know that I always change things in patterns, but I thought this was just so well done. There was no notes. I, I loved it. The only thing I did just the teeny bit different was that I used worsted weight yarn for the nose, and I think she used velvet or chenille or something like that but I just loved it. I thought it was so cute. And again, I think this would be a great pattern to just do a couple of tweaks on, and then you could customize it into a different type of animal, like make the ears a little bit bigger and make it a different color, and it would be a fox. You can make floppy ears, and it would be a dog. And you know, you just need to change a couple of things and like change the tail, but the base pattern the way that it's designed, you could change it into so many different types of animals. And I love patterns like that. So my daughter picked out this really fluffy yarn to make the little bow. And when I was trying to crochet it and then put it on there, it was way too big for this little plushie. And so what I did was that part that I crocheted, I gave that to my daughter as a hair bow for herself, which I'll put a picture in if I get one. But so now she has a matching bow to her little kitty. So how great of a gift is that where you can make this cute little kitty with a bow and then make a matching bow for the person that you're gifting it to. Like that is the perfect gift, is it not? I think that is so cute. So there really are so many options for video tutorials on YouTube. I think you may just have to do a little bit of searching and maybe like if you enjoy somebody's pattern, then you can scroll through the rest of their feed to see if they have other tutorials. Like I enjoyed this one so much that I am thinking of looking up some other patterns by the same designer. So I think that YouTube, like I said, is just such a great resource for, I mean, a lot of things, but video tutorials as well, if that is something that you like to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to finding a free pattern from a library book. And if you don't already know my crochet backstory, I actually learned how to crochet from a library book. I went and checked out a physical book from the library and I got all the supplies that I needed and during a snowstorm I taught myself how to crochet. So I have a lot of nostalgic feelings from library books and I think that this is something that people overlook a lot is that you have access to free patterns right there from the library. And now for today's video, I'm actually going to be checking out a digital book which again, I feel like is something that a lot of people don't think about. But I'm going to be using an app called Hoopla. Now, if you have a library card, you can sign into Hoopla and you can check out, I believe it's 10 books a month or something like that, but you don't have to wait in line or anything like that. So the other digital library app is called Libby. And with that one, you do have to wait in line. Like if somebody has already checked out all of the copies of the book that you want, then you can put a hold on it and you wait in line kind of the same way that you would do with physical books from the library. But with Hoopla, you can check them out and they're just available right away. But like I said, I do believe there's like a 10 book per month limit or something like that. Now I will say Hoopla's app is not the best. I like Libby for the functionality of their app. 
it runs really smoothly and you can put all of the books that you get from Libby onto your Kindle if you have one. But Libby's options for crochet books were really, really limited. And I believe the only one that I wanted to check out was already checked out by someone else. And so I decided to go ahead and get onto Hoopla, even though their app does not work nearly as well. It does glitch a lot for me. I don't know if that's just me, but I do have some issues with that app. But once you get past that, you can find a lot of free resources there. So I will say that there's not nearly as many options on Hoopla as there are on Ravelry or YouTube or Instagram, which we will get to, but you are able to check out an entire book which has multiple different patterns in it. So I ended up settling on this one and this has so many patterns in it. They are all so cute. I have used this same author's book for, I believe it's called Kawaii Garden or something like that. I'll also put that on the screen, but those patterns are really cute as well. But I decided for this one to just use this book and I was thinking that it would be a lot of really fun, simple patterns, but I let my daughter pick out which pattern she wanted from the book. And she picked out this absolutely adorable hot air balloon, which is really, really cute, but it's probably the most complicated pattern in the book, which of course my daughter picked the most complicated pattern, but I decided to go ahead and do it and take on the challenge. So let's go ahead and cut to me making this hot air balloon. Here he is in all his glory. I have to admit, this is one of those patterns where when I was done with it, I was like, whew, I am so glad that's done. It was a lot of work to do all of these color changes. Now, like I had already mentioned, I am just not used to doing this many color changes. And I think I showed in my video that the blue color was showing through on the white quite a bit. So I did just run some yarn through each of the rows to kind of cover that up. And it does look better, but not perfect by any means. Now, I don't know if I am doing something wrong. And maybe if you have a lot of experience doing this, you can let me know what I'm doing wrong. But I am like kind of pulling the yarn tight and I do like nice tight stitches. So it's not that my stitches aren't tight enough. So I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong, but I actually noticed that even in the sample photo, you can kind of see the purple running through her white. So it may just be the nature of changing colors. I'm not really sure. But once I got the hang of it now, I did start this over. I think this was the third time. So third time was the charm. But once I did get the hang of it, I actually really enjoyed it and I thought that it turned out so cute. I love, look at that. Like I love the way the color changes look. They're so neat. But I actually really like the shape of this pattern. And like I said, the color changes do look really cute, but I just got a little bit frustrated with the way that they looked in the end with the color showing through. Now for the basket itself, I went completely rogue, you guys. <laughs> um, my daughter actually picked this pattern because she thought it would be really cute to put like a little toy in the basket part and like float it around. And the basket was just too small for that in the original pattern. So I did make it a little bit bigger and then I just kind of made my own design. Basically what I did was I did single crochets for the bottom part 
And then this part is like half double crochet and chain ones alternated throughout to make this kind of woven look. And I do think that it turned out really cute. Now, the only other thing that I don't love about this pattern is that he does look kind of pointy. And if you work with blanket yarn, then you know that this happens sometimes with blanket yarn. And my solution for that is to usually do eight single crochets in that original circle and then go to 16 and then go to 24. However, with the color changes, that was gonna mess everything up. And so I didn't really wanna mess with that. And so it does look a little bit pointy, but that's okay. My daughter still loves it. She still thinks he's really cute. One critique that I would have of this pattern is that there weren't a lot of pictures involved. There was really only the one sample photo. And then I think they had one photo showing you like the top of the work like that. And then that was it. That was the only photos. They didn't have kind of photos as she was making it. And I do tend to prefer patterns that kind of show you what you're doing as you're going along. And that's how I write my own patterns as well. But there were so many patterns in this book that if you were to do that for each pattern, it would have been the longest book of all time. So I kind of understand why she didn't do that. But for me personally, I do prefer patterns that are written that way. But honestly, the problems that I had with this pattern were not because of the pattern itself. It was really just kind of my own personal preference. And so I really think that we're three for three on really good patterns found in three different ways. So let's go ahead and move on. So like I already mentioned, the astronaut was for my husband. The kitty cat was for my younger daughter. And then this hot air balloon was for my older daughter. So there's one more member of the family and no, not Lily. Although now I feel kind of guilty. Like I should have made Lily something for this video. Hmm. But the other member of the family is me. So I decided to pick out a pattern for myself as a little gift for myself. We all need to do that more often, don't we? I feel like I really don't crochet for myself that often. I'm always making custom orders for my shop or things for my kids or things for my nieces and nephews. But I feel like I don't crochet for myself that often. I say that as I just made my Keyleth dolphin and I made that one just for me as well. But I was really excited to pick out a fun little free pattern on Instagram that was going to be just for me. So Instagram is definitely the social media platform that I use the most. So I'm actually the most familiar with finding free patterns on Instagram. You really can just search free amigurumi pattern or any sort of variation on that and you are going to find something although I will say I think it used to be easier than it is now again with these algorithms that kind of show you what they think you want to see as opposed to what you just searched that's really frustrating to me and I also ran into meta AI or whatever that thing is called trying to give me answers about amigurumi patterns and I'm like that's not what I wanted here I really just wanted to search for free amigurumi patterns but there are actually so many options when it comes to free Instagram patterns I had a hard time choosing and in fact I have like probably 20 or 30 saved to my little saved folder on Instagram of other patterns that I wanted to try because there are just so many amazing designers out there just giving their work away for free on Instagram. And I actually want to do this in the future, I think. I think I wanna come up with something really cute and simple, like something that would be maybe easy for you to make for a market and put that on my Instagram, but I'm still kind of deciding what I wanna make for that. So kind of similarly to YouTube, if you find a designer that you like, you can scroll through their page and a lot of times they'll have saved to like a little highlight of their free patterns that they offer and you can scroll through and then you can save them and they're all right there in your save folder. Like I said, I do this the most often, so I'm the most familiar with how to do this, but in case you're not, it actually is really easy and a really fun option because everything is saved right there in the little square. Now you aren't gonna have as many photos as you would as something like on Ravelry, and obviously you don't have the video component like you do on YouTube. For somebody like me who really does prefer written patterns with maybe a couple of photos thrown in, this is a great option. So I did end up deciding on this designer, which I'm not even gonna attempt to say their name, but their Instagram feed, you guys, is so cute. I had so much fun scrolling through, it's very aesthetic, and I ended up deciding on this absolutely adorable snowy owl 
Now owls are one of my favorite animals. Now I know a snowy owl is kind of more appropriate for winter. And like I said, we're currently in the middle of summer and it's so hot. So maybe I was kind of subconsciously like, I miss winter, let me make this wintry owl. But anyways, let's go ahead and cut to owl making Rachel. Look at him. He's just adorable. I absolutely love this pattern. Now, I did end up adding some little feet. The pattern had you just embroidering the feet on. And I think that that would be fine if you made it really small. Like they had it made, I think, in just like a small cotton yarn. And I think for a smaller guy, that would have looked okay. But since I made this in velvet yarn and he's kind of bigger, I think it looks cuter with some little feet sticking out right there. But I think the only other thing I changed is that I didn't add any of the little feathers onto the wings. I think it just looks cute just like this, just with a few on the chest. But I absolutely love the way the head is sideways. Like, how cute is that? And I love the way the head body and tail, which you can kind of see right there, are all worked in one piece. I think that that is absolutely brilliant. I love the way that that looks and I love the cute little wings and he's just adorable and charming. And this was a simple pattern in the best way. It was just so much fun. I really love these kind of patterns like this that you don't have to think too much about. I was kind of just vibing, watching a TV show and I had so much fun making this. And again, this is another one of those patterns that I think that you could change into different birds very easily. You could easily switch and have the head on this side if you wanted to. It's very customizable. I could really see myself using this pattern again in this same way, making different colored owls, or you could add a little face and make a barn owl. You could do the same pattern and just change it just a little bit and make it into a penguin. There are so many options with the way that this pattern is written up and I just absolutely love that. And I am so happy to say that I picked four patterns and all four of them were so good in their own way. Now, if I had to pick a favorite, I have to pick this little owl because this was made for myself and I am gonna put him on my desk and have him just be a little desk buddy. I just think he's so cute and charming. Now, as far as the process of making them, which one was my favorite? I have to say probably the astronaut. I really enjoyed the way that pattern was written. I enjoyed the amount of photos that it had. And it was also just something I've never made before. I've never made an astronaut before. And I found it really fun to do something that I've never done before. But I do think that they all turned out really cute and are really great in their own ways. And this really helped me. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I do get stuck in a rut get kind of stuck in my own ways of like, like I said, I'm very familiar with looking up Instagram patterns, but I'm not as familiar with Ravelry. I'm not as familiar with YouTube and I hadn't checked out a library book in a long time. So this really just pushed me to try some new things. And I'm actually really happy to report that it turned out really well. And I made four really cute things for each member of my family. So you have to let me know what you thought about today's video, which of these patterns was your favorite. And what is your favorite way to find free patterns? Maybe you find your patterns in a way that I didn't even mention today. So let me know down below. And as always, let me know what you were making while you watched this video. I absolutely love reading the comments of what you guys made while you were watching this. And so please leave that down below. And of course, if you liked today's video, be sure to hit the like button. 
You can subscribe and stick around. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to see next. You can follow me on Instagram. It's The Faded Wildflower. And be sure to keep an eye out for the free pattern that I will eventually put up there. And you can also check out my Etsy shop. I sell patterns as well as custom plushies. And again, thank you so much for watching and for being here. I will see you next time.